Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Di and today I'm sharing with you my diary entry for the week of August 25th through 31st. Today is Saturday, August 31st. So this week has been just another okay week for me. I do kind of feel like the <laughs> summer depression has kicked my butt this week. Um, it's just not been a good week for me. It's not been a good week for me. I've, I've just not been like I don't know wanting to do things <laughs> so with that being said I didn't do a lot this week uh, I did finish two books so we will talk to you about those um, I'm in the middle of one and I did just the barest amount of knitting so I'll talk to you about that uh, we did some video game play and we will do some what I've been watching towards the end so yeah, <laughs> let's get into it. So, I did, this week, finish Eruption by Michael Crichton and James Patterson. So, I think the best way to go into this book, if you don't know anything, is just to go by what's on the back of the cover. So, a history-making eruption is about to destroy the big island of Hawaii, and the U.S. military has made a terrible mistake that could mean the end of life as we know it. So... This book definitely delivers on that premise, um, but me as somebody who was born and raised in Hawaii had issues with this. Now I was born and raised on Oahu, so this does take place mostly on the Big Island. So things there are a little different from how they are where I grew up, but that being said, I don't think there's a lot of difference with how the people their talk um, and so a lot of the stuff that came in with this including all of the inclusion of Hawaiian terms and phrases uh, bothered me because the way that they were delivered in conversation it was like okay blah 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 insert Hawaiian word and then oh it means this people don't talk like that I don't think anybody who speaks another language will talk like that to somebody who doesn't know that language unless they know what they're referring to. I mean, even for me as somebody who lived on the islands for a very long time, even I don't use those words. Like, I'll speak pigeon. I spoke a bit of pigeon when I lived there. I speak it when I go back home. Um, but, you know, <laughs> lots of people there speak pigeon and there's barely a lick of it in here at all there's like full formal english sentences and then there's like the inclusion of one hawaiian word and oh it means this and it was really 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 hard it was really hard for me it irritated me every single time now as we got to the like last quarter of the book something changed in the way that certain terms and phrases were included where they stopped telling you what these words mean, meant. And I thought that was really weird considering for the first three quarters of this book, anytime there was a term or phrase that was in Hawaiian, there was, oh, it means this. But then as we get towards the end in the last quarter, there is not that. And so uh, there's no consistency with how they're using it. And so, <laughs> I, I just, I didn't really enjoy that part. And it weighed heavily on my total enjoyment of this story. Now, as you get towards the end and finish the actual novel portion, there are acknowledgments from both Michael Crichton's wife and James Patterson. And there is a notation that says that there was a collaboration with somebody who is, I think... Native Hawaiian for the dedication to this book, which is the phrase that's in front. Um, and it really is just a couple of sentences. It just says, to Hawaii's own, this story is dedicated to you, the people of the famed island chain. And right above here, there is that same phrase in Hawaiian. But it literally says that it was for the dedication. And so I'm not sure where they picked up the other 
terms and phrases from. And it's a little more questionable for me because there is quite a bit of it in here. So where did they get those terms and phrases from? I'm not sure. So yeah, that all weighed heavily to me. Anytime they were talking to a local, it was just not fun for me. Plus, the stereotypical thing happens in this book where people who get killed off are minorities. And that irritated me a lot as well. And so, yeah, the whole like scientific portion though about you know, the eruption and what they're trying to do to prevent it from causing mass destruction and all kinds of things like that. That was interesting. There's definitely a bit of tension in all of that. But when you weigh it in with where this is set, the people that they're dealing with and how everything like came about, it wasn't as enjoyable for me. So this did end up getting three stars for me. I can't give it any more than that. I considered giving it a 2.5 <laughs> because of all of the issues that I had. They are definitely personal issues for me because I am somebody who was born and raised there. I am somebody who knows how people there talked around me. But it doesn't even say that Michael Crichton or James Patterson went to the islands to do any kind of research or anything and the research that was done or that was referenced to was when Michael Crichton had gone to Italy to talk to a volcanologist there about a story that he was writing set in Hawaii. It doesn't say that he had gone to Hawaii to do any research. So big problems I have with this book. I will never ever read it again. It's great that there's like some representation I guess. But at the same time, is it good representation? No, I don't think that it's good representation at all. And I don't know that there's any, there was any research done to back the representation that was put into this book up as far as the people of the islands. So, yeah. <laughs> all I know is what is in the acknowledgement section of this book and nothing else. So with that, that, those are my thoughts on this book. It was very disappointing for me. But as a volcano thriller, those aspects were entertaining. So I finished that one. And then I also finished Fearless Magic, which is the third book in the Starcross series by Rachel Higginson. I am listening to this one on the Audible Plus program. So, like I said, this story is about a girl who's grown up her entire life and she's been in like schools that have, for one reason or another, been kind of destroyed <laughs> by unknown forces. And she always seems to be the root cause of whatever happened, but she has no idea what happened because she always blacks out when whatever happens occurs. And so now she's at her last like chance She's being shipped off to yet another school. She's only got a little bit left to be in school. So she just needs to make it through. And it is then that she realizes that the reason that all of these weird things have been happening around her her entire life is because she's had magic. And so we follow her learning about her magic, learning what she can do with her magic, how to prevent things from being destroyed by her magic and also some like political unrest that's going on in the world that the magical users live because there is a, a royalty that has kind of oppressed the magical society and so there's a rebellion and things like that. So very much teen uh, fantasy with a little bit of romance. So this is the third book out of I think what's supposed to be four of the main series and then there's a bunch of spin-offs after that. 
unlike the first two books in this series, I don't have an ebook copy of this particular one. I did get the first two books in this series free um, on Kindle, but the third I don't have. And so I was only able to listen to this one in its entirety. And while I don't feel like there's anything wrong with the narration, the main character, she does some things that I don't understand why she's doing those things. Like, they don't make sense to me. And at this point of the book, or of the series, she's supposed to be somebody that's pretty, like, important to what's going on with things. <laughs> I'm trying not to be spoilery. But it kind of makes it so that she's supposed to be in like a leadership kind of role. And with her personality and the things that she has done in the past throughout this series and how she kind of acts, it's hard for me to believe that she has these types of leadership skills and that anybody would even want to follow the things that she comes up with <laughs> if you know what I mean um it's it's there's you know taking yourself out of the reality of it a little bit stepping back but then there's like complete you gotta like completely disbelieve and I feel like that's what I've got to do with this particular character because for me she definitely is not somebody that I would go into battle with. <laughs> no, no, no. And her romantic choices, I have issues with. Um, this story does, or this series, does have a love triangle in it. The love triangle was brought in in the second installment. Love triangles are not something I enjoy. And I always end up liking the second lead, the one that is brought in after she meets the first person you know how those things go with love triangles um yeah so i like the second lead i like the second lead a lot better than the main dude but i don't foresee that going anywhere because we know how these things go right and this series is called star crossed it's a star crossed series so star crossed lovers that relationship that i am enjoying is not going to go anywhere i mean <laughs> I think even without knowing anything about this series, just based on the series name alone, you know that certain people are destined for each other in the story. And I, again, have to <laughs> step out of the realm of believability to believe that those two are going to be together because things have happened in this story that are unforgivable to me and I would never be able to be with somebody who had done that but I have a feeling that she is so yeah at this point I'm just going to read the last of the four to finish out the series and see where this goes I again don't really enjoy the decisions she makes some of them are just so not smart and it's hard for me to read her character being that she's the main character <laughs> it's weighing on my enjoyment of this series but the political intrigue is interesting learning about all the different types of magics i'm really enjoying i enjoy the lore of the magic in the in this world and the types of discussions that they're having about the oppression that has occurred and things like that. I obviously have questions as to why certain things aren't being done um, in regards to the fight with the royal family, but I presume I'll get whatever answers I get in the last of the four. Like I said, there are other books in this series that are continue continuations but I don't believe that they're considered like the main story because even the synopsis of number four says the final book in this series. So I have to believe that the other books in this series are spinoffs 
and have to deal with not uh, the cast of characters that we're dealing with where our female character is the main. And so I have a feeling that the rest of the books in this series focus on other characters that we've been introduced to in this series. So we'll see how I feel about continuing after I read the fourth one. But the third one was probably my least favorite up until this point. <laughs> uh, but I ended up giving it three stars as well. So two three-star books this week. And I finished that audiobook on Wednesday. And so on Thursday, I was supposed to start another audiobook. And I was just not in the mood. I did not have anything that I really wanted to pick up. And the Aurelium Magical Readathon is happening in September this year. And since we're only a few days away, or we were, <laughs> um, I didn't want to start anything outside of what I have planned for the Aurelium Magical Readathon prompts. And so I didn't start another audiobook yet. My intention is to go ahead and read the fourth book in this series so that I can say that I finished another series. Um, even one that I started and stopped this year, which would be great. Um, but I just wasn't in the mood to listen to any more in that series and I needed to take a day. So I will probably be reading the fourth book in that series uh, starting on Monday. Um, but now I do have my Aurelia Magical Readathon set. And so I don't really have any audiobooks on that <laughs> on that TBR. I will say that almost the entirety of the TBR is manga because I need it to be easy. <laughs> I need it to be easy for me. Um, I will slip in audiobooks as I can, but there are things happening in September that are gonna keep me pretty busy, and I know that my reading is gonna slow even more down than it is already and so yes so that's pretty much all that i finished reading this week two three star books which is not great and that also kind of put me in the dumps <laughs> because i'm like why am i having such a hard time finding books that i'm real i really enjoy i don't understand and so i decided to go ahead and pick this one up to see if this would like brighten my mood. And that is My Happy Marriage Volume 6 in the light novel by Akumi Akitogi. This one is published by Yan On, rated ages 13 and up, which is teen. So this series starts out as a Cinderella retelling where we have our main character Mio here and she is being uh, raised in a family where her father has remarried. Um, there is a supernatural element to the story where certain people have abilities to see things or have um, powers. So Mio is one of these people that doesn't have abilities when we meet her and then her father like I said married another woman and they had a child and their child has abilities. So Mio is pretty much thought of as a nobody in their family. She's even made to be a servant, very much like Cinderella, right? Eventually her father puts her in an arranged marriage with this guy who's Kyoka, and he is the head of a special supernatural unit of the military. He has abilities, He's his family is very like high ranking and so he thinks that she's pretty much just going to get thrown out on the street and whatnot. But obviously that doesn't happen. And we kind of follow Mio growing into the person that she can be now that she's away from the oppression of her family. And learning things about herself. And there's a political thing going on behind the scenes as well with the royal family and some other things going on with uh, some of the supernatural elements in this story and it's just a really really interesting story i usually read these every time they come out but i am behind 
and so I wanted to catch up. I absolutely love these covers. And so yeah, right now we are kind of in the middle of uh, preparation into going into battle, which is always kind of nerve wracking and exciting in a way. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen in this one because I feel like we're getting to like the major battle that's been kind of building since probably the second book of this series. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing how all of that goes down. But yes, so far I am enjoying this one. It is taking me a while though. Um, I'm on chapter 83, chapter 83, page 83 chapter three and I got these uh, new bookmarks when I was at the Barnes and Noble the last time they're leatherette magnet bookmarks and this particular one says fell asleep here which I thought was hilarious so I had to get that there are two other bookmarks in that set I can't remember what they say but they all look like this and they have some words on it and so yeah so I'm enjoying this one I believe the audiobook version of this light novel series is still going to start coming out in like November. Definitely picking those up because like I said, I really, really enjoy this series. The romance between these two characters is super sweet and it's very, very tame because he is somebody who's had fiancés that have run away from him because of his personality and she has never like ever had any kind of romantic feelings for anybody because she hasn't had the opportunity to have them and so everything is fresh and new for this couple they're very very slow with their relationship and the steps that they're taking and I'm just really really enjoying them very very sweet definitely recommend if you like a little bit of supernatural uh, historical romance really really good so I am enjoying that, and that's everything that I am currently reading. Like I said, I am set for the Aurelia Magical Readathon. I'm going to be going into my third or fourth year with the Master of Elements. Um, I think it's my third year. And so, yeah, I've got seven prompts for the autumn season, which is the same as always. And I'm going to be read se reading seven volumes of manga. Or, I'm going to be reading six volumes of manga. And then one of the prompts is to read a book that's 100 pages more than the last book that you read. And so I'm just going to do that one off the fly. I think you were supposed to pick that book when you were setting up your TBR. So I just set it up like, or I finalized it last night. And so I think... If I go based on this book, this book has 165 pages, so that would have to be 265 pages. So anything over 265 pages is what I'm going to use for that prompt, and I can pretty much use any audiobook that I'm going to fit in during the month for that, I think. But yeah, September's going to be interesting. <laughs> like I said, there's going to be lots of things going on for me um it is my booktube anniversary and my birthday month and so yeah <laughs> big month for me and let's get on to another yarny update so one project this week <laughs> you know what's in this bag this is my daughter's delicious and dungeon socks the walking mushroom and scorpion pie colorway from hawari bazaar um, I really think this is scorpion pie and that this is walking mushroom, but because I get the sock set, I don't know like what the single skein says on it when people order only the single skein. So yeah, I think this is walking mushroom and I think this is, I mean, this is walking mushroom and this is scorpion pie because I think in the anime, the walking mushrooms are purple and not red. Um, in my mind, before I even knew about the anime, I thought the walking mushrooms would be red, but I think they're purple. In any case, this is what I'm using. It's on the Hawaii Bazaar Nova Sock Base, which is a 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon Base. 
last week I showed you my progress on her sock and I thought I was going to have this sock done by the time I talked to you this time but that has just not been the case so we are here so I was at where the mushroom is <laughs> Um, and I, so I put it in the heel, I did the heel flap and turn, and I did my gusset decreases and a little bit more than that. So I've got about 30 rows left until I start doing the toe or 40, 30 or 40, and then the toe. So yeah, it's looking pretty interesting. And... I definitely need to get a move on with this one. So it's just a plain vanilla sock, 56 stitches, 2x2 two two rib, 45 row leg, uh, slip stitch heel flap, a square heel turn, and doing this on a 9 inch circular needle. So I will continue with this this week. I should have it finished by the time I talk to you next and started the next sock. But we'll see how I feel this week. I had planned to work on this sock a lot yesterday, but I ended up having a headache day. And when I have headache days, I can't do any knitting because I need like a distraction in order to make me not feel my headache. And on headache days, I call them headache days because the headache will usually last all day long. And unfortunately, that is exactly what happened yesterday. I had an all day long headache and I couldn't knit. I put in a little bit and I just, I was hyper focusing on the knitting and not what was on the television. And it made me hyper focus on the pain that was in my head. And so I had to stop doing that. And I actually ended up playing a little bit of video games. So we'll do some video game chat now. Um, I talked to you about Genshin Impact, I think, before. That I've been really enjoying Genshin Impact. Well, we had an update this week and we had a new land open up. And so it's been very interesting exploring that land because there are dinosaurs this time. And so it's very, very interesting. I'm really enjoying the music as well. It reminds me of being back at Disney World and Animal Kingdom. And I'm one of those people that gets really anxious when you have battle music, like, you know, like an enemy has seen you out in the wild and they're chasing you. Some of the, the themes that they use in the different lands really like give me anxiety. <laughs> and so a lot of times I will just run away. <laughs> I know it sounds silly, silly. It just depends on the day. Most of the time I'll turn around and fight them, but Sometimes I'm just like not not in the mood and the music affects me so and so yeah, but the battle music in the new land uh, Natlin uh, Is really interesting. It doesn't give me those an anxious vibes it, it just is more of like an adventure type theme and I actually really enjoy it So I'm really enjoying exploring land i enjoy genshin for the exploration i enjoy walking around i don't enjoy when things see me and want to like you know attack but i enjoy going around and foraging for the different types of food items and materials and just seeing the different lands and and things and it's really really been interesting so i played a bit of that and then last week i mentioned to you that i was watching a lot of animal crossing rpg challenge which is done by nintendalk um so i found some other creators that have been doing videos on their um, animal crossing rpg challenge islands and it's just been really really nice been relaxing for me to have it on in the background while I'm working so I haven't been like watching as much booktube or uh, pot knitting podcasts uh, while I'm working this week it's been a lot of Animal Crossing uh, streams that I've had on in the background and I think that really helped because like I said I've kind of been down in the dumps this week and just like the music and the whole vibe of Animal Crossing does make me feel a little bit better and so I've been really really wanting to get in on that Animal Crossing RPG challenge but realistically with the things that I've got coming up in September 
I don't really have time for it. And so I definitely do want to get in on that when my time light lifts a little bit. But in order to help me not want to get in on the RPG challenge right away, I decided to go back and visit some of my uh, villagers on my two current islands. So we do have two switches. We have a standard switch um, and I have a switch light. So we have an island on each and I thought, you know what, I really, really want to play. Let me just go back to our islands. And so it was really, really nice. The characters remind me how long it's been <laughs> since I've been back to the island and I didn't think it had been that long. I thought it had only been like a year, but apparently it had been a way longer than that. So I've just been enjoying going back to the island and visiting with the characters and talking to them and doing like fishing fishing for things and collecting things and I will say that the island is not full of weeds like I thought it was going to be but the flowers have definitely taken over and so there's some cleanup that needs to be done but um, we had a campsite villager on one of the islands and it was actually one of the villagers that we really really enjoy and so we decided to have that character go ahead and move on to the island and so already within a couple of days of being back we have a villager change and it's exciting. I'm enjoying it a lot. I definitely am still wanting to do the RPG challenge and I will, um, but it'll probably be late September, early October before I can get in on that. So it's appeasing my want of doing the challenge and so I'm enjoying it a lot. And there's still lots of things that I haven't done in Animal Crossing on my island. So there's always the opportunity to go ahead and try to like complete my Critterpedia because I apparently have a couple of things I haven't found yet. And so, yeah, just really enjoying, really, really enjoying. So those were kind of the two main things that we did this week. And as far as TV watching, we're still watching the Olympics. This week we did rapid fire shooting which was interesting um or i should say we watched rapid fire shooting we watched the sailing competitions which i i'm not really one for the dinghy or the uh what's the other type of sailing boat but i enjoyed the kite surf the kite um sailing that was really really fun and exciting um and again Sailing is another sport that we'd never watched before, so that was interesting. Uh, we did watch the foil uh, fencing, and I don't enjoy foil fencing, so I definitely prefer the saber fencing. So again, good for me to know for the next time around. And then we are currently watching the judo, and we're really enjoying that as well. So we're going to continue watching judo. I think we have like three, three more. Uh, episodes to watch of the judo and so yeah still watching the Olympics still enjoying it immensely and that is pretty much all I have for you this week so let me know down in the comments below if you're participating in the Aurelia Magical Readathon what are you going for as far as your studies and do you have your TBR already set if you're not participating in the Aurelium Magical Readathon, are you setting a TBR for September? Or let me know what you've been reading, watching, or working on. And also let me know uh, what your best and worst reads of the month were. I would really love to know. And if nothing else, you'd just like to let me know that you were here. If you could leave me some kind of fantasy emoji, so like a sword or a dragon a knight or something i have no idea what emojis are available <laughs> but something fantasy like i would really appreciate it and it would really help me out and that will do it for me today so i hope you're all doing great i hope you're all safe and healthy and until next time take care and smile always bye